Hello, and you are listening to Squash Radio. This is a brand new podcast that wants to bring the inside of squash to life by serving up the best stories. We've already gotten great feedback from listeners who help point us towards new stories to share, but we're always looking for more. So if you have a story you think is interesting, please reach out. But here is where we still need help. We are small, but have big dreams. Can you help us get the word out and spread the news? Small things like, do you have a website and want to include Squash Radio? Well, it's super simple to do, and boom, Squash Radio can be right there, with new episodes loaded automatically. Or can you support us on social media by following us or liking us? Anything is extremely appreciated. Well, there are lots of ways to get in touch with us, any of the social media apps, or just email us at squashradio at gmail.com. That's squashradio at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you enjoy. What about this? This call is being recorded. So, Aaron, can you just tell our listeners a little bit about all of those things? Sure. So, I've been playing squash now for 28 years. Started when I was 13 years old, and I'm 41 now, which explains why my knee hurts and my back hurts. But, you know, that's what we get for playing. I've also used squash as a weight loss issue as well. I've been uh, fighting... You've done a fantastic job, by the way. Uh, thank you. But, uh, you know, I was 13 years old and 200 pounds and used squash and changing my diet and lost 50 pounds when I was 13. Maintained that off, played college squash for Haverford for four years. Came back, uh, you know, put on a little bit of weight as well and then ended up losing another 80 pounds. Getting back into squash in my late 20s and early 30s and wanted to make sure that I was a good father for my now 12-year-old, which is also scary. I've known Richard for a long time now, played at the concourse. One day I aim to hit a lob as nicely as Richard does, but we'll get so that's Aaron Morrison you just heard from, and you'll hear more from him later. But his story is like so many others in our sport, where squash has played a central and impactful role in their life. Not only on them physically, like losing 50 pounds, but also because squash can help build a sense of community. But how are these squash communities actually being built? Well, that's what our story and theme is today, Building Squash. We will share with you a snapshot of communities on a tour of Squash in the South, where you'll hear from a cast of characters, all from different walks of life, different backgrounds, even with different jobs and roles, but all have a shared passion for the sport of Squash. Each piece will show you Squash at a different stage from how a Squash club got built, to reinvigorating a squash program with a new squash professional, to how squash could help grow your business, and of course, the deep impact that squash can have on your health. To help share the story today, we're going to have help from this man. gentlemen, if I could interrupt your meal and have your attention. Richard Millman. If you've listened to this podcast before, he will sound familiar. Richard is more than comfortable amongst this cast of characters, and that's because he is one of these characters. And like me, he wants to help tell these stories. So Richard, why don't you give the listeners just a little bit of a preview of how we pulled this story together, where you traveled, where you went? Well, Connor, um, you and I had some great conversations, and... I traveled to various different tournaments in Atlanta, in Louisville, Kentucky, here in Chattanooga. And in the process, I talked to a lot of people that I've known for a long time, some people that I've not known for very long at all. And what, what was consistent and interesting was the enthusiasm and the character of all those people that contribute to make our squash village what it is. And that's what I was trying to get across. And I think that's what's so exciting. And in trying to pull the story together, Richard, I mean, what do you think is the biggest surprise for you and I on this uh, project? Well, I think we started off thinking that we were going to do some reports about some tournaments, which in, in and of itself seemed to be a good idea but as we continued and got into the layers and, and unraveled the onion 
so to speak. What we discovered was that there was a bigger story here, that the story wasn't just about individual events, but about the consistent attitudes and uh, emotions, um, camaraderie of the people at all of the different places that we went. Unique characters, yes, but all working towards very common goals. Um, and, it, and again, makes me realize what we've got in common in this global squash village and how exciting it is when we make the extra connections, somebody like me showing up to a variety of tournaments, that we can make the global squash village even stronger. And I think that's what Squash Radio is doing, to be fair, is, is making people realize that they're not the only person out there thinking like they think, but there's a whole bunch of people thinking like that out there. So we jump into the story at Richard's new squash club in Chattanooga, Tennessee, who took time during their first ever tournament hosted at Scenic City Squash to recognize the owners and pioneers of this club, Mike and Taylor Moman, a husband and wife team who run a thriving restaurant group. They were both out of town, so Scott, the brother, accepted this recognition and MF on their restaurant behalf. group. So, Scott, thank you for accepting this on behalf of Mike and Taylor, and thank you to Mike and Taylor for creating such a wonderful oasis for our sport. Maybe you can uh, correct my inaccuracies in the story. Uh, you, uh, you sort of stole my thunder. <laughs> when bad things happen, and they occasionally do, uh, airplanes fall out of the sky, tragedies and stuff, they do a root cause analysis and try to figure out, you know, what exactly happened. And it always turns out that, you know, it takes a series of things going wrong for the terrible event to occur. If you look at it on the reverse, it is actually a series of very interesting good events that actually occurred that led to this club being open. One of it was I started playing squash early and I got my brother into it. The other was a sports barn. Pim Gary, I don't know, you all familiar with the Gary Tennis family of Chattanooga. If you read McEnroe's book, he talks about Pim's brother Zan quite a bit in not a very flattering way. But Pim, 20 years ago, built a real primitive squash court at the sports barn. And he played on it with his friends a couple times and then it just sat there gathering dust. I came back from medical school and I found out that the court was here and I dragged my brother out there and we started playing and then my brother was like, well, you're not home that often so we got to get somebody for me to play. So we dragged Ricky out there and we started playing. And uh, there were two courts at the original sports barn. Both of them were terrible. One of them got the sports barn management. They never really supported it. And one of the courts got turned into an exercise room for aerobics. And the floor was slippery. And the floor had, like, lamination or whatever on it. It was very dangerous to play. It was sort of late court tennis. But on, on, a squash, ice. on ice, you were playing with squash shoes. Rubber gum shoes didn't stick to it. It's just like a bunch of dust. You had to slide around like clay court. But eventually that court got dismantled and they didn't have a court for a while, which really sort of irked my brother. The sports barn didn't really care about the small community that they were trying to build locally there. And they did replace the court halfway across town at another sports barn location. But, you know, it was just one court and it seemed like there was some demand. And then all of a sudden Marcus showed up and he started beating everybody. <laughs> and really a lot of different things went right. My brother ended up being very successful in his business. And he always asked me about Squash Club, and I knew from the Valkyrie in New Jersey that the easiest way maybe to lose money was to build a squash club, <laughs> <laughs> particularly in a small town like Chattanooga. I mean, that's sort of a no-brainer. But his business became so robust that he decided that, hey, I really want this for the community and my family, and he did it. And here we are. So, I mean, it's just a lot of things went right, and it's a very interesting coincidence and circumstance, but it, you know, it worked out well. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. So for the first scene, we actually go to your home club in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Scenic City Squash. What was it like hosting your first tournament at your home venue? It was exciting, nerve-wracking. Um, there was an element of doubt. Squash is very new to these people, and they were putting a lot of trust in me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm bringing this thing to them, and of course, I've done it many times before, 
and I have a picture in my mind of what I'm trying to achieve. It's kind of amalgam of competition and camaraderie and hospitality and growth. Um, but of course, the background of Phoenix City Squash is very, very few of the members had ever even played competitive squash before. And so they were, you know, having to trust me, or I fine with asking them to trust me, that this was a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I went in a little nervous, but determined. Richard Millman here for Squash Radio at the Louisville Boat Club with last week's champion from PDC in the doubles, Jay Hatcher. Boat Club is his home club, and he's here at the Kentucky State Open. Can I ask you, Jay, tell me a little bit about this club and uh, what about this tournament and a little bit about your new pro, Lee Scott. Well, Richard, uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, the boat club was founded in the late 1800s as a boat club here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we've expanded to be one of the finest rackets facilities in the southeast. And obviously, as we strategically plan to move forward and not only make tennis, which is what we're known for, a great sport here, we wanted to expand squash. And Lee Scott from the U.K., the over 45s national champion, has been a huge addition. We've already seen a huge influx in energy and the quality of play. So, Richard, thank you for coming this weekend. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jay. And I've got to tell you that I've had a great time hanging out with the members here. It's an old club, but it's got a great attitude, great spirit here in the club. And I've really enjoyed the members over the last couple of days. So, look, I'm looking forward to seeing you play again. I really enjoyed it last week. And thanks so much for your commentary for Squash Radio. So, Richard, Squash Radio sits down with Lee Scott. But you know him way better than this brief segment. What else can you tell us about Lee? Lee's an interesting guy. He's got massive passion um, and tremendous drive. Uh, I've, I've worked with him. Um, I work particularly well with him. We ran some camps together at Meadow Mill in Baltimore. And uh, when we were both on court coaching at the same time, um, Meadow Mill's a massive club, as people may know, 16 courts and you know, a huge gym area. But there was nowhere in the club that you couldn't hear the pair of us when we were coaching because, you know, his personality is huge and, you know, I have a bit of a reputation for driving people on. And so uh, it's really interesting to hear him talking in this little segment that I do because when I interviewed him and the spotlight, so to speak, was turned on him, he was sort of deadly, deadpan and serious and, and he is very serious about what he wants to do here in the United States. But I just think it's not a, a reflection of the amazing bubbly personality um, that you, you you know catch on to when you see him coaching. Now, now I'll have to apologize for this impression, but I can tell you he is so insistent that his students are activated and not passive. So a typical situation would be that you would be standing behind a court and Lee would be coaching and the, the, the 12 or 13 year old boy or girl that he's coaching would be standing to return serve and they'd be flat footed. And all of a sudden you'd hear, toes man, toes, get on your bloody toes. What's the matter with you, you're dead. So that's the Lee Scott I know huge passion, huge drive, and uh, he will do anything he can for his students. He'll bully them, he'll promise them, he'll chastise them, he'll bribe them to get the best for them. Um, so don't take too much notice of this very serious young man you hear speaking in the interview. Hey, can I ask, how's your experience at the boat club been, and what are you hoping to achieve here? Yeah, hi Richard, I arrived October last year, uh, 2016, came across to really try and develop the game in the Midwest. There are clubs like Cincinnati, not so far away, who are doing a good job in growing the sport, a lot of juniors coming through. Louisville, one hour after we had kind of four... Four juniors really who were who were active, and I've obviously came in and I'm trying to build and increase the participation for kids on a younger age and build it up. We've got kids now playing from eight years old, and now competing in local events and hoping to play in more regional events. 
The members are, have been really supportive and want to see the sport grow. Um, certainly Louisville only has two main clubs, the Boat Club and the Pendennis Club, which only has one court. So we're trying to really look to grow the sport and, and add more courts, certainly at the Boat Club, and get more and more people actively playing, looking at trying to get more participation from the schools which is proving difficult because of all the other sports they've got going on at the moment and busy curriculums, but we're trying to get more school kids and after-school programmes going. Uh, I'm sure that it'll really take off and thrive. I'm absolutely sure it will as well. I've seen you in action. You're a fantastic promoter of the game. And of course, the schools need to realise that squash isn't just a sport, it's a life skill. And just like learning music, it will put their kids in a great position as they go forwards in their life. Uh, a lot of people in the United States don't realise what a world-class player you are. And I'm personally excited to see what happens with the World Masters Championships next summer in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. I think you have a very good chance of being a world champion and I'm certainly hoping that next year in the US Nationals we'll see you there because I think that you will be a great addition to our program here in the States. So look, this is Richard Millman for Squash Radio. As I said, with Lee Scott, Squash Radio folks look to see things happening here in Louisville. You've got a world-class pro here and uh, it's an exciting time for Midwest Squash. Thanks a lot. Bye. So, Richard, you know, Kentucky right now is just starting out on their journey uh, with Lee Scott, but you have the advantage of perspective and time, and you've done this in so many communities. What are your thoughts? Well, wherever you go where there is a new situation, what's required is that the person that is driving that new situation is what I call a Pied Piper somebody that has their own passion and who can set fire to passion and enthusiasm of the people around them. And of course, they can't do it on their own. But what I've seen happen many, many times is that somebody will go into a situation and they will work hard to gain the trust and the enthusiasm and the loyalty and support of just a few people in that new situation. And they will gain help from those people in recruiting more people. And I'm reminded of um, a former employee of mine, uh, Ahmed Hamza, who went into exactly that situation at the Piedmont Driving Club and has just, through force of personality and enthusiasm and service, built up an amazing junior program of 75 kids on two singles courts and two doubles courts. This is what we always try to do as Pied Pipers, And I really believe that Lee Scott is exactly that kind of Pied Piper. But if he gets the support of a few key individuals, will get the children going. And indeed, the children will bring adults, parents on board as well, because so often it's the reverse to what one expects. The children get involved, and then you tell the parents, well, this would be fun for you. And you get the whole club growing together as one family, inclusive community. So in this next segment, we talk to two huge supporters that make running squash tournaments possible. The sponsors. Listen to why they help grow the sport. Richard Millman for Squash Radio here, and I'm here in Marietta at Tom Rumpler's club with the Dragon Doc himself, Dr. Gary Myerson, who has been a marvellous supporter of squash in general and this sport for many years. Gary, thank you so much for what you do. Why do you do it? And what has squash done for you and your family over the years? So, Richard, first, thank you for allowing me to uh, speak with you. We've been close friends for many years when you were coaching to begin with. And my reason for putting on the Dragon Dock Tournament was actually a payback for squash for what it actually did for my son. So when Aaron was 13, he weighed 210 pounds. He was changing schools and really wanted to pick a sport that he really liked. So we were trying to figure that one out, and racket sports just seemed to be pretty good for him. So we originally were over at the Concourse Athletic Club, as you know, having previously been there, and Lana Quibell at that time was coaching. So we were 
trying different sports, so he started playing squash with Lana, and after the third lesson with her, she came up to me and said, he's a sponge. He's a natural racket player, but I'm the wrong person to coach him, and said we need to go over to go to Tom's. So he started Jenny Craig, lost 55 pounds in five months, started playing, taking lessons four days a week for Tom, which he did for the next four years, going up and through before college, and it completely changed his life and his activity and his function, and I subsequently started playing as well and loved the sport, and still realize nothing beats it. So I started putting on the tournament at that point more or less as a payback for what squash did for me and the family and also to promote the youth because that to me is the key. Bring the one young ones in, get them going or otherwise nothing goes to the school, nothing goes to the tournaments, nothing happens unless we get youth doing the exercise. And being here in Atlanta, especially at the club where we are at, we, and especially with Westminster School, we've turned this whole thing around. We've taken a high school team, which now has five ASB courts, who are becoming excellent competitors, and we've maintained the sport. So I've been playing 30-something years and can not play without it. Well, Gary, your mentorship has really made a big difference. I'm delighted to be back here in the area in Chattanooga. I've just started Baylor School and Macaulay School, and so the opportunity to come and work with Westminster is very exciting for me. We wouldn't have that opportunity if folks like you hadn't have put into the game what you have. I won't get Tom Rumpler to speak because he doesn't want to speak into a microphone, but you and I both know that he is just a master of fostering this game, and without him, perhaps neither of us would be here having such a wonderful time. So far as the Dragon Dock is concerned, thank you so much for all you do. I'm personally delighted to be back in the area because we're great friends. I'm having a wonderful time with your son, Aaron, who I had a few lessons with many years ago, and now has turned into a first-class referee, and is a very good player himself. So, Gary, on behalf of Squash Radio, thank you so much once again for all you do, and now go and enjoy the final of your tournament. Richard, thank you much. As always, our friendship has been long-lasting and will be maintained, and here's to Squash and maybe the Olympics, question mark? Thank you, Gary. Bye. Keith, if you wouldn't mind just saying a couple of words to the folks about why do you do this and what is it that you get out of it? Well, Richard, thank you. Thank you for the beer mugs. That alone should be a reason to write a check to do this. <laughs> Certainly this nice poster for my man cave. I have to tell my wife I have to build an addition on to add in. <laughs> You know, she'll be very happy about that situation. So we did a radio interview earlier, and you asked me a similar question. And I could have been serious and said it was for the building of the community, for junior squash, for junior development, and all those wonderful things. But really, for me, it's been about fun. This has been a great group and a great way to spend life. And I can't think of a better way to do it than friends and whatnot. But I'll be a little serious and add in, Hint, hit, not in a wink. I see some sponsors over there. To these sponsors is another people in the community who maybe are entrepreneurial who run businesses, not in a wink. Do this for a couple, three years, and it'll come back to you 20-fold. So in addition to fun, it's made a lot of money for me. So. <laughs> I'm glad it has. I'm glad it has. Thank you very it's much, a good Steve. thing. Really Thank you. It. That was Keith Clements, who has been sponsoring Richard's events for well over a decade now. And he's a financial advisor that's been playing squash for well over 25 years. We've all heard the life lesson and advice that life is really about relationships. You never know where just a simple hello could lead to. Well, here's another example of where a small hello turned into a big career opportunity that changed someone's life. 
Richard Millman here for Squash Radio, and I'm sitting here in uh, very warm weather outside the Windy Hill Athletic Club with resident PSA professional Ruben Phillips, who has been here for a little while. He's the number one seed in the Dragon Dock professional tournament this weekend. Fantastic young player, originally from England. And so, Ruben, thanks for coming and speaking to us here at Squash Radio. How did you get involved in squash, and how did you end up here, and what are you hoping to achieve? Hey Richard, thanks for having me on Squash Radio. I originally got here by playing a tournament not too far from my home club here uh, at Lifetime in Sandy Springs. And that was my first time in the US. I was, I believe, 21. And I had just been on the tour for about two years. And I ran into a gentleman called David Andes, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And he was new to squash at the time, very excited. And luckily, I happened to be the only person who had a conversation with him. And he really liked that a lot, so we took a liking to each other. And further down the road, you know, we had conversations of sponsorship. He wanted some professional coaching, so we made a sort of deal where he would help me get around to a few tournaments. And with that, I would uh, help improve his squash game, which I did. And having come into Atlanta more, I built more relationships. I ended up getting in contact with Tom. And it kind of just came from there. Um, I wasn't hunting down a job, but I mean, just from being around so long, it kind of just, you know, manifested. And I took on the opportunity. And a lot of people at the time was asking questions as why to the south. There's not many players because anybody who comes from England generally goes to the northeast, the New York, so the Connecticut's where there's other players. And I wanted something, something different. I definitely didn't want the snow and the ice. Um, and also, I wanted to be in a market where. You know, I'd be appreciated. I didn't want to be at a club where it was just there was gonna be eight pros and I was a seen as another pro. So that's how that sort of happened. I grew up playing squash in West London in a small club. It used to be called Portobello Green Fitness Club under the Westway flyover, just by Portobello Green Market. Mm -hmm. It's now called Westway Sport and Fitness. And my dad's the resident coach there, and he taught me to play squash. So I grew up playing football, or soccer as they call it. And never, my dad never forced me to play any squash, but around 13, 14, I'd hit a few balls, and you know, he said, if you want to play a sport, you got to choose. So I was like, okay. And I liked the one-on-one -on -one aspect with uh, squash. So I decided to get serious with squash, and I was like, can you teach me? And he was like, okay. So we got serious, quit all my other sports, got my head down, was training hard, and managed to get to, I think, was number seven in under 19 in England and from there I had finished college and school in England and I wanted to get on the tour and then that's how you know start traveling around and that's kind of how I ended up here well, that's fascinating so you've been on the tour for a while you've established great relationships here you're very well liked I'm, I'm not just pretending everybody really loves Ruben here and his leadership has been fantastic for us in the south but what's your long-term view what would you like to do you're still playing at a very high level but what would you like to offer to the sport and particularly to the south if you can that's a great question so currently I'm 25 and my personal goals within squash in terms of playing is to still get as high as I can. So I'm just outside the top 100. I think I've had the highest, my highest ranking is 111. I'm probably sitting around 130, 125 right now. So my goal is still to get within the top 100, which I think I'm playing around that standard anyway. Try to win more tournaments and kind of put the Southeast on the map, so to speak, in terms of touring pro from this area doing well. And then also in terms of the coaching aspect down here, just trying to bring a different element and teach these kids how to train like a professional, even if that's not their aspiration and their only aspiration is to get into a college and they want to play college squash. You know, if you teach them the mentality of training like a professional and taking it seriously and being an, an elitist and all that kind of stuff, it will help them on and off the court. You know, different things in terms of what helped me get to where I am now from where I came from, being in a position where I wasn't surrounded by a lot of top juniors. It was mainly older men at my club. So having to deal with different styles of play, a lot of these juniors are not used to that. They're used to just playing with each other, friends, and then they get into a tournament and they can sometimes crumble. So helping them deal with life situations on and off the court and you know, just helping develop the community as a whole. That's terrific, and I think you make such a good point. And 
for myself as a teaching professional, I would like to see a lot more juniors playing adult squash. Where I came from in the UK, juniors only really played junior tournaments at the weekend. During the week, they played in the adult leagues and they played against Mrs. Blueberry Muffin, who'd been the county champion, and some old fella who played with both hands. And you had to learn how to deal with that stuff. And so I think you make a great point. And also, to have access to you and your training regime, not only, as you rightly say, will it help them on the court, but when they get into adult life, treating every day with focus and seriousness to get the best out of themselves, I think is an invaluable lesson. Well, look, Ruben, thank you very much for spending time with us here. Um, we're so lucky to have you here in the South. I'm personally hoping to facilitate some challenger and above level PSA tournaments. And I certainly want my folks in Chattanooga and beyond to get the opportunity to see you, your incredible athleticism and also your amazing touch and variation of shot. For those that don't know Ruben, he's got great deception and he doesn't use the deception all the time so you're not too sure which one's coming next. So, Ruben, for Squash Radio, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Richard. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. So, squash has been rated the number one sport in Forbes magazine to stay and get in shape. We know the positive impact that living a healthy lifestyle can have on us and our loved ones. So we close out this segment with the whole clip from Aaron Meyerson sharing his story on how squash has impacted both himself and his family. Richard Millman here for Squash Radio at the Scenic City Squash Spring Classic, our first U.S. squash tournament here in Tennessee. And I'm here with Aaron Myerson. Aaron and I go back for nearly a quarter of a century. His father was a great supporter of mine when I was the pro at the Concourse Athletic Club. Aaron is a former student of mine, and it embarrasses me to say he is now 41 years old, has a wife and lovely children. Just one. Just one child. And he's here playing in the five and the 4.5 tournament I think or maybe the 40 plus yeah I'm in the 40s now which is terrifying to me also but I just asked Aaron to come and speak to us about his involvement in squash where it started his relationship with me and what he's now doing with CISRA to continue promoting the game we both love so Aaron can you just tell our listeners a little bit about all of those things sure so I've been playing squash now for 28 years started one I was 13 years old and I'm 41 now, which explains why my knee hurts and my back hurts. But, you know, that's what we get for playing. I've also used squash as a weight loss issue as well. I've been uh, fighting. Done a fantastic job, by the way. Thank you. But, uh, you know, I was 13 years old and 200 pounds and used squash and changing my diet and lost 50 pounds when I was 13. Maintained that off. Played college squash for Haverford for four years. Came back, uh, you know, put on a little bit of weight as well and then ended up losing another 80 pounds getting back into squash in my late 20s and early 30s and wanted to make sure that I was a good father for my now 12-year-old, which is also scary. And I've known Richard for a long time now, played at the concourse. One day I aim to hit a lob as nicely as Richard does, but we'll get there. Aaron, speak to us just for a moment about your crazy father, who is one of my great favorite people, who is the sponsor of the Dragon Dock Tournament. And why has he been involved in squash in the way that he has. Well, and he got me involved in squash as well when I was 13. He played and wanted me to come play with him, so it was a wonderful father-son bonding experience as well. Playing as a junior, he and I would travel to tournaments together, so it kind of gave us some time just as father and son. Being a physician, he didn't have a lot of time. Would work till 10 o'clock at night and come home, so we would see him rarely. So that was really a special bond that he and I had. Oh, and he saw what squash did for me and what squash has done for him as well. You know, obesity is something that we all deal with, so he has worked in maintaining his weight as well and wanted to give back to the squash community. So that's what puts his time and effort into supporting Dragon Dock as well as other tournaments around Atlanta. Uh, And hopefully we'll get him involved here with uh, your tournaments and your uh, competitions up here in, uh, where are we now? Chattanooga. Chattanooga, yeah. Well, listen, Aaron, thank you for all you do for our sport. Thanks for coming. And thanks, of course, to your dad, who's just been a fantastic supporter. I hope we can welcome you and more of the Atlanta community back. But for now, Squash Radio fans, it's myself, Richard Millman, and Aaron Myerson saying goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) 
So Richard, we just listened to how much squash has impacted Aaron's life. And you played a strong role in that life change. How does that make you feel? Well, you know, Aaron is just a fabulous guy. Um, His enthusiasm for the sport is amazing. And it makes me realize that if we can, in some small way, affect young people of whose potential we know little at that point, we will get paid back many, many, many times over. Um, It was really Tom Rumpler that made the big difference to Aaron Myerson. And I was very fortunate to be along for the ride and and contributed. But when you listen to both Dr. Gary Myerson and to Aaron Myerson, and what a difference our efforts in the sport made, makes you realize that just a little contribution can sow a seed that really repays over and over and over. So there's a growing theme here on Squash Radio, and it works both as a metaphor, but also as a strategy on how to grow the sport. The idea is pretty simple, and it's about how important it is to help plant seeds, because we never know what they might be able to grow into. Today we touch on a variety of ways those seeds get planted, and they build into some great things in our lives for us all to share. Everything like clubs, programs, tournaments, all building towards what's most important in our lives, relationships, and a healthy lifestyle. So the next time you have a moment, think about what seed you might or be able to plant. It all helps towards growing squash. Even if it's just a simple hello with someone new, you never know what could happen. Well, we hope you enjoyed our show today. This could not have been done without the wonderful work by Richard Millman and all those who took the time to share their lives with Squash Radio. So thank you to all of them, and thank you to you for listening to Squash Radio. Stay tuned for more great stories. Well, thank you so much for your time today and for joining us on Squash Radio. We hope you enjoyed this latest episode. But before you leave, we just have one quick last message. As you know, Squash Radio wants to help tell some of the best stories from Squash World. But in order to do that, we want and welcome your help. Do you know a person or a story that involves squash that is interesting, funny, moved you, you care about, reflects your passion for the sport? Well, share it with us and let's try and get it out there on the air. You can email me at squashradio at gmail.com or reach out to us on social media. Again, thanks for your time and... Well, until next time, be well and have fun.